praise Him tonight. We're going to keep on and shouting. We're going to keep on and moving tonight. Because God is in this place tonight. He's working miracles and signs and wonders tonight. Come on, just raise your hands. Come on, embrace His name. He's a way maker. He's a miracle worker tonight, Jesus. We thank you tonight, God, for moving tonight, Jesus. For touching every life and every soul tonight, Lord. The conviction to be here tonight, God, to save God, to deliver and set free tonight, Jesus. We just thank you tonight, God. You just come by our way tonight, God. As you come by that woman with the issue of blood, you come by her way that she touched the hem of your garment. God, you come by our way tonight, God, that we can touch you tonight, Jesus. But we got to reach out and touch you tonight, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, raise your hands. Come on, just worship him. Get Get into his spirit tonight, God, into that worship tonight. We thank you tonight, God. We worship you tonight, Jesus. We thank you tonight, God, that you're coming by tonight, God. You're coming by tonight, God, and we're going to touch you tonight, Jesus. We've got to be desperate for you tonight, God. We've got to be desperate for you tonight, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. How many come tonight desperate for him tonight? you got to come to service desperate for him. Desperate to touch him. Desperate for a miracle. Desperate to be touched by him tonight. We gotta be desperate tonight. Hallelujah. Come on and just praise his name tonight. We worship you, Jesus. We thank you tonight, Lord. Hallelujah. You're worthy tonight, God. You're worthy tonight, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you tonight. your name tonight. Hallelujah. So good to see everybody in the house of the Lord tonight. You can be seated just for a moment.
Hallelujah. So good to be in the house of the Lord. God has gave us another opportunity tonight. Hallelujah. If offering takers will make their way to the front, we'll get ready and take up tonight's offering. Let's make Sister Keith welcome. She testifies, sings, ever how she feels tonight. Give her a hand. Hallelujah. He's on time tonight. Hallelujah. Yes, he is. 
Brother Sean, will you stand and testify tonight, brother? Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Brother Seth, testify tonight, brother. Hallelujah. Brother Charlie, will you stand and testify tonight? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me invite you again tonight. Let's all stand to our feet. Hallelujah. We got a lot to celebrate. We got the victory here in the house. And I tell you what, if you're down and out, Jesus is in the house. And you know what? You don't have to leave the same as you came. Hallelujah. Let's all give him a round of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got something good in store tonight. Hallelujah. We got the word of God coming from an anointed pastor. Let's give him a hand clap. Let's make him welcome. Brother Keith. Well, let's give the Lord a shout of praise tonight. Come on, let's give the Lord a praise tonight. Amen. Turn around and shake hands with somebody right quick. Tell them, say, good to see you in the house of the Lord tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Shake hands with two or three folks tonight. Give me the key of G. Tell somebody else it's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight, would it, Jeff? Going to sing a, just a chorus of this old song. Hallelujah. Jesus fan. Turn and tell your neighbor I'm a Jesus fan tonight. I was driving home one Friday when commotion caught my ear. In a field, a crowd was gathered. How I heard them yell and cheer. Ask a man, why are you excited? I just don't understand. Someone said, man, you're not with it. We're just football fans. So I drove a little further and I saw another crowd. They were dancing, they were swaying. I heard music playing loud. Ask a man, why are you sighted? I just don't understand. Someone said, man, you're not with it. We're just rock music fans. Go around and tell somebody, know what this is about now. So I went to church that Sunday, and I heard that preacher say, Jesus gave his life on Calvary, and he's coming back someday. So I started getting happy, how I shouted, how I cried. Someone said, don't get excited, all my this was my dream. Well, I'm a Jesus man. Mercy, I just got to lift my hand. So now, when you hear me shouting, don't have to understand. I can't help but get excited. I'm a Jesus fan. Come on, say it now. Well, I'm a Jesus fan. I'm a Jesus fan. When I think about God's mercy, I just got to lift my hand. So now, when you hear me shouting, don't have to understand. I can't help but get excited. Let's sing it one more time. I'm a Jesus fan. I'm a Jesus fan. When I think about God's mercy, I just got to lift my hand. So now when you hear me shouting, you don't have to understand. I can't help but get excited. I'm a Jesus fan. Hallelujah. Would you give the Lord a shout of praise on that tonight?
So I went to church that Sunday and I heard that man of God preach. Jesus gave his life on Calvary and he's coming back someday. He forgive me your sins. So I started getting happy. How I shouted, how I cried. Someone said, you can't do that around here. Oh, but this was my reply. Well, I'm a Jesus fan. I'm a Jesus fan. When I think about God's mercy, I just got to live my head. So now when you hear me shouting, you don't have to understand. I can't help but get excited. I'm a Jesus fan. Hallelujah. If you're a Jesus fan tonight, give him a praise, would you, tonight? Hallelujah. I know we are a noisy bunch, but I'm going to tell you, if you go to heaven, it's going to be a worship and a hallelujah time. If you're going to go to hell, it's going to be a weeping and gashing of teeth. It's going to be a noisy place in hell. Hallelujah. But that's one place. Amen. Not going. Done got my reservation somewhere else. I'll be glad you have tonight by the grace of God. Amen. He's a good God tonight. Amen. Remain steady reading of the word tonight. Again, thank you for being with us tonight. Amen. God is so good. You know, I told, uh, it's, we have a crowd, something about 150 some here tonight. And I told somebody a while back, I said, just talking about church, and I said, we run probably somewhere around 150 on Sunday night and 175, 80 on Sunday morning, Wednesday nights, 100, 120, something like that. And they looked at me like I was lying. They said, that is unheard of. And I'm thinking, where is God's people at sometimes? You can find them anywhere, but you can't find them at church. Am I telling the truth? You can find them at all kinds of events, but you can't find them at church. Something wrong. Something wrong. Hallelujah. But God's got some people. And I'm one of them. How many glad you one of them tonight? Amen. God is so good. Amen. I want you to open your Bibles tonight if you have them. And amen. Always write down, pray in your Bibles. And amen. Follow, you, follow the Word of God. Sometimes the Word of God will just jump out and hit you real good. Amen. 1 Samuel tonight, chapter number 11. I want to preach a few minutes tonight. Amen. Give these singers, musicians, another good hand. They've done an awesome job tonight. God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. How many know he's a mighty good God? Hallelujah. I want to preach a few minutes tonight something that, that the Lord really dealt with me up on. And he, and he, for this season of time and this uh, time that we're living in, as we was talking this morning about the young man we thought that he had shot his mother or grandmother. Amen. This young man today, 20-some years old in Monticello, just the county over from us, or two counties, I guess you could say, shot his grandmother, 94 years old. Shot his mother for, for no apparent reason to the point, but because the devil is on a rampage. I don't want to gloat on the devil. I don't want to lift him up, but he is doing his job, and you've got an adversary, and you've got to be wise to him. He's a thief. He's a murderer. He come to kill, steal, and to destroy. That's the nature that it doesn't change. That's his nature. And anybody he can find to use, he will use that person. Young, middle-aged, old, it doesn't matter to the devil as long as he can destroy. That's his nature. We're going to talk a little bit about that tonight. And Amen. And you got to understand where I'm going to here just in a few moments tonight. Amen. That J. Bash Gilead, amen, was part of Israel and it was the hill country. And in Jabesh Gilead was a group of people, and there was an enemy that came against them. But then Nahash the Ammonite came up and encamped against Jabesh Gilead. And all the men of Jabesh said unto Nahash, Make a covenant with us 
and we will serve you or serve thee. These guys didn't even offer a fight to start with. You, you come up, and we don't, really don't want the confrontation. We'll just, you make a condition, you give some kind of a treaty, and we'll agree to it. And they asked, the Ammonite answered them, on this condition, will I make a covenant or a treaty, if you understand it like that, with you, that I may thrust out all your right eyes and lay it for a reproach or a disgrace upon all of Israel. And the elders of Jabesh said unto him, Give us seven days, respite that we may send messengers unto all the coast of Israel. Naash was so confident that nobody would fight for them. He said, Go ahead and see if you can find somebody. Then if there be no man come to save us, we will come out unto you and give you our right eyes. Then the messengers of Gibeah of Saul told the tidings in the ears of the people, and all the people lifted up their voices, and they wept for the sorrow for the Jabesh Gilead people. And when Saul came after the herd out of the field, Saul said, What aileth the people that they weep? And they told him the tidings of the men of Jabesh. And the Spirit of God came up on him, upon Saul, when he heard those tidings, and his anger was kindled greatly. That's a righteous anger there. And he took a yoke of oxen, and he hewed them into pieces, sent them throughout all the coast of Israel, by the hand of messengers, saying, Whosoever cometh not forth after Saul and Samuel, so shall it be done unto his ox. And the fear of the Lord fell upon the people. And they came out with one consent. I mean, they come together with one mind. And when he numbered them in Bezak, the children of Israel were 300,000, and the men of Judah, 30,000. Somebody shout, praise the Lord. Give me just a couple moments here. They said unto the messengers they came, Thus say unto the men of Jabesh Gilead. Everybody shout, tomorrow. tomorrow. How many knows tomorrow is always a better day? <laughs> How many going to go do more for God? Tomorrow. How many is going to be obedient? Tomorrow. How many knows tomorrow has always got victory in it? That's right. But Saul said this, you tell the men by this time tomorrow, the sun be hotter about noontime, you shall have help. Tell your neighbor, you're going to get some help now. And the messenger came and shooed it to the men of Jabesh, and they were, who wouldn't be? <laughs> Therefore the men of Jabesh said, Tomorrow, told Naash this, We'll come out unto you tomorrow, and you shall do unto us that seemeth good. But God was working a plan. One more verse. And it was so on the morrow that Saul put the people in three companies. They came into the midst of the host in the morning watch and slew the Ammonites until the heat of the day and it came to pass that they which remained were scattered so that two of them were not left or they run out together. They went opposite directions. How many knows when God gets in the arrangement, things are different? How many believes that tonight? Brother Tim, say the prayer of the reading of the word. Would somebody give the Lord a shout of praise in the house tonight? You can be seated. You that write, remember the name Nahash. 
It means the shining one as a serpent. That's what his name means. How many knows that we are fighting against these spirits tonight? And they have come against you and I as never before. Can I get a witness? And the battles that right now is to get people to give up something instead of stand for something. Anybody believe that? When the men of Jabesh Gilead talked to Naash, that shining serpent, the best thing looked like was to surrender. How many knows the devil loves for us to surrender? Can I get a witness in here? <coughs> Going to preach a while. Everybody shout, the devil seeks surrender in your life. But Jabesh Gilead means a place where the stones were heaped up for a testimony. It was like a memorial or a monument. At Jabesh Gilead, there was stones of the testimony of what God had already done. How many knows when God, he, he has done it, he is doing it, and he'll continue to do it. Anybody believe that tonight? And there was that testimony of what God had done for Israel. But now they had a serpent up there charming the people into surrender. Getting them to believe the best thing they could do was just to throw in the towel and say this is a much better deal. Can I get a witness in the house? But amen, they said, what kind of treaty will you make with us if we surrender to you? And he said, I want your right eye for a reproach or a disgrace in your life. Satan loves to mark every one of us with something to disgrace us. Now, these men of war, when they went to battle, they carried their shields in their left hand, on their left arm. And they would look around that shield to how to fight with their right eye. They could not battle without looking around that shield to see where their enemy was at. And the devil knew if he could get their right eye that they would start to be harmless against him. Naash was not going to be satisfied with just, amen, getting the right eye. He was going to come back at a later time and annihilate them. Satan will always make everything seem good for a while. But after a while, he'll come back. Can I get a witness in the house? You know he's tried to come back many times in your life. Now, these were men, uh, amen, that they would never be able to fight again. It would be like, amen, today to a point, amen, going in the service and cutting your trigger finger off. You would be unable to fight. Wouldn't be able to, to defend yourself or your family. And the enemy has come in so slyly and so craftily. He's come in with such a deceiving thing to get us to make a league or a treaty or a covenant with him. And he said, all I want is your right eye. But I want you to know something. Uh, they sent a messenger out uh, and went through the tribes. Uh, there was a testimony. Uh, there was a, uh, a group of rocks. Uh, amen. There were stones uh, to say what God uh, had done in the past. Uh, he had delivered. Uh, he had brought them through. Uh, he had kept them. Uh, he had anointed them. Uh, but all of a sudden, uh, their testimony uh, wasn't standing up. Uh, I believe we ought to stand up tonight and testify. Look what the Lord uh, has done. 
I said, I believe we all ought to stand up and say, look what the Lord has done. Maybe I got to pray for your ears instead of your eyes. But anyhow, hallelujah. Look what the Lord has done. We need to have a testimony. He never failed us. Amen. In the past, when I thought uh, there was no way out, uh, God just blew the door open uh, and made a way. Uh, everybody in here uh, has experienced uh, the goodness of God. How many of y'all experienced the goodness of God? And the mercies of God? Oh, my God. I wonder what the devil's after you with right tonight. What kind of treaties he want you to agree with? What, what are them voices that he's wanting you to agree with tonight? To steal from you. When you should have a, look at that rock and say, I got a testimony, devil, you're not getting this. I'm not going to slow down. I'm not going to quit. I ain't looking for nothing else. Can I get a witness in the house tonight? Look at how many homes and families have been destroyed because they made a covenant with the devil. They made some kind of agreement. Oh, you said, I'm, I, I really didn't. When we start throwing a walk away from God, the devil knows we're drop, c- compromising. There's no place to agree with your enemy. Can I get a witness in the house? And Saul heard about this. He was not even king at this time. They had tried to make him king, and amen, some of the people rejected him, and he went back home, amen, attending to be a farmer. Sure did. But the Spirit of God came upon Saul. You better be glad there's somebody in your life that the Spirit of God can come upon. As I preach to you here tonight, Satan wants your eye. Now, this is symbolic, uh, amen, it, 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 it's, uh, amen, to the point, um, amen, but, 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 but in, this, uh, in, in this metaphor of this tonight, amen, God is trying to show us something, amen, what the eyes represent in scriptures, uh, this, amen, it means uh, that the light uh, or the eye is the light of the body. It lets the whole body see what to do. My eyes let my, guide my feet, you know that to a point. My eyes guide my hand. My eyes guide me and give me light to know what I, where I'm at and what I'm doing. The eye represents revelation. When, you're, when, when there is no revelation, when the eye is blinded, and blindness in the scriptures always is symbolic with poverty, amen, and a lot of times even with a curse. And that's what the devil wants is your sin of the goodness of God. And the mercies of God. Amen. And that testimony. How many once had a testimony? Look what the Lord done in my life. I got saved. I got you in church. I got full of the Holy Ghost. Whoa! I'm on fire for God. And somewhere he wants that testimony to diminish. How many churches has the devil took the eye or the light out? We give it to him without a fight. We give it to him, just surrendered, didn't press, didn't push. It won't be that bad. I still got one left, but you do, but you can't fight. And the devil loves the reproach that he can do. But the Bible said the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Now watch this. Everybody shout my eye. Now, I, it, it would be horrible to have any kind of disability, but my, you, to be blind, to not know day from night, not to be able to see, to comprehend anything, to me it would be a living nightmare. If I was deaf, that would be difficult. That would be a, a, a handicap to me. But at least I can see you. <laughs> See, Satan wants that revelation. He wants that understanding. He wants that the, the ability that you can perceive and know what's right and what's wrong. How many of the devil's after you? And how many of he's after to kill you? 
Now, I'm not gloating on the devil. I don't, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not a fan of doing that. But I've got to make you aware that you have an adversary, the devil. And he's seeking whom he may devour. He walketh about. As in the book of Job, and Jesus, or the Lord God, as the devil, where did he come from? He said, up and down, to and fro. That is a military term uh, that he was marching, amen, and he was on guard looking whom he could come and get a hold of. He walked backwards and forth throughout the whole earth, and he would look, and he would watch. And he would look for the innocent or the one that was vulnerable or the one that he could do something to. And he came to Job's house one day uh, and he pulled up at Job's address uh, called God's Blessed Avenue. uh, And he said, wait a minute, I I can't get through there uh, because God uh, has put a hedge about him. Aren't you glad God's put a hedge about you tonight? Samson was a man. Man, I tell you what, Samson was a hero, but yet he got careless in his fight for God. And he went down to Gaza one night, and he, and he stayed with a harlot, which was against God and his word. But he stayed there in it. He got wind of it that they were going to capture him that night, the Philistines. But at midnight, the Bible said he arose. And he went to the gates of Gaza. And he got a hold of those posts that were in the ground. And he pulled the post and the gates. Some commentaries are somehow a little different. But at least the gates and the post weight over 800 pounds. And he pulled those gates and poles out of the ground over 800 pounds and carried them miles up the hill and set them on the hill to disgrace them. You know how many times that you have disgraced the devil by God's mercy and goodness? When he was, amen, and everybody thought, man, they'll never make it, but you came through it. So the devil's come back for revenge that he wants to disgrace you like you disgraced him. Every time you get them, say, I'm washed in the blood. Amen. This old flesh, I got trouble sometimes, but I'm the righteousness on the inside of me. I am the righteousness of God, and the devil can't do nothing about that. Amen. David or Samson pulled those gates up, took them to the top of the hill, set them up there and said, you can't stop me. God. It'd be like today, a man picking up a thousand pounds, putting it on his shoulders, going five or six miles up the road. Boy, you'd have to say, that's God. But watch what happened to Samson. The devil said, how can I stop this? Young people need to hear me. The devil try to stop you if he can. He'll stop every one of us if he can. And, and bless Samson's heart. I want to say this in the right way. If there ever was an ignorant man, Samson was ignorant. Shout me down. All of you women should have said Amen. I read a bumper sticker one time was somewhere in a parking lot. Said all men are ignorant and I married the king. I thought, well, you're the queen. Somebody shout hallelujah. So be careful how you talk about your man. Well, God is getting quiet in here. Now, Samson, everybody shout Samson. This mighty man, this man of strength, and, and, and God had used him to kill a thousand men with a jawbone of a donkey. But he went back to Gaza, Gaza, whatever how you want to call it. And when he got down there, he found a shining serpent called Delilah. And she was party. I don't know what pretty all except they tell me a little Pekingese dog with stub nose is pretty. <laughs> it's 
Somebody shout hallelujah. But how many of say God's a good God tonight? And Delilah began to taunt Samson. They had paid her money. Everyone was going to give her 1,100 pieces of silver to find where his strength lied. See, there's always something in your life that wants to cause you to compromise. And if you open the door for one thing, amen, another door will get open if you're not careful. I'm preaching good. I got, amen, this ain't the message, but I got to get to this. And it wasn't long, Samson Amen, got weary and he got tired and he got frustrated and he was so tired. And Delilah said, amen, I can tell you one of the best places to lay and it's in my lap. And I'll lullaby you and I'll take you and I'll bless you and I'll play with the locks of your hair. But all she was after, it wasn't Samson, it was the money. Samson's after your life and it's precious tonight. Amen. Amen. He wants your life. Yes. And she began to taunt him and tease him. And you don't love me. If you love me, you'd tell me. You've lied to me. You've told me this. And you've told me to put my hair in the weaver's beam. And you've told me this and that. And amen. And she'd cry, Samson, the Philistines be on you. He'd rise up. Amen. And shake yourself, and the Spirit of God would come upon him. Amen. And my God, you can see the hand of God. That was a testimony that God was upon him. Can I get a witness? But one day she pressed him, and that's where you and I are at tonight. The devil has pressed us and tried to push us and press us and push us and press us. Amen. Do we get to try to say, I don't know, but I got news by the power and the grace of God. Before the sun gets hot, God's going to move in your life. Tell your neighbor the sun's coming up. You ever feel like you've been pushed? You've been pressed? You've got two choices. To grumble about it or turn around and push back. God's good. How many God's good? Now I'm going to tell you something. I try, I try to be a meek person. Now, every one of y'all don't look at me like that. I'm meek, but I got a, I got a limit sometimes. Didn't say I sinned. Didn't say I wanted to hurt nobody. I've not said a potty word in 40-some years, let alone curse words. I'm not going to cuss you out. No, don't say it. But see, sometimes, I was just saying, I'm tired of this. <laughs> she pushed Samson. Philistines couldn't handle him. Warriors couldn't handle him. Great men that were warriors and soldiers couldn't get a hold of him and hold him. But he surrendered to lay in Delilah's lap. Boy, I tell you what, there's times, you gotta watch that lap. It might be drugs, it might be a man, it might be a woman, it might be a needle, be pills, anger, lust. Just plain sin. How about that? <laughs> Cooling down. Neglecting to pray. Quit seeking God. No passion for God. So she and I, in a few months, we're going to be married 50 years. December the 7th. I can remember when we got married, December the 7th, 1974. I don't know where 50 years went to. Boy, it's been a good ride. 50 years. That's awesome. But you know how many times we've had to renew our love? Because I got on her nerves. Now some of y'all sound like, I don't believe 
It's okay. If yours never got on your nerves, they don't live with you. Can I get a witness in here? I mean, my wife has never had an argument. I had a guy tell me one time, said, we've been married, I don't know, at that time, I believe he said 24, 25 years. He said, me and my wife has never had an argument. Somebody done a lot of surrendering. I still got to wonder about that. I ain't going there. Ask the cockroaches what they say about it. But anyhow, I don't know what your shining serpent is that makes you want to surrender, that shines at you. But there's one out there. And old Naash was a shining serpent, and when he, they, he looked, they looked at him, he sort of memorized them. He got them to, what do you want? What can we do to just to surrender to you? He said, I want your right eye. I want to blind you. I want to reproach you. I want to disgrace you. And Samson played with Delilah the same way. And they said in ancient biblical times, one of the warfare tactics was if you caught a great man that was your enemy, you would gouge out his eyes. You made him totally defenseless. He could never fight you again. He could never harm you again. How many churches are harmless tonight to the devil? I'm not, I'm not being critical. I don't even like to say that. How many Christians, the devil don't have to worry about them no more? Amen. They're no longer a threat. But I'm going to tell you, if you're a child of the living God and you've got a heart for God, you've got a big target on your back. You've got a bullseye on your back. And the devil's looking constantly. He wants to take you out. You may not, I just come to church. No, but when you pray and you love the Lord and you cry to God and say, God, God, I don't feel like I do nothing, but I love you, Lord. And God touched my family. You may be standing for your family. It's untelling. Amen. How big a threat you are to the devil tonight. Can I get a witness in the house? Somebody give God a shout of praise. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. How many knows when you hold this word up in your life? Amen. You've got a testimony. You've heaped up a testimony and say, I still believe this. Amen. Devil, you destroy the foundation of society, but I'm still on a foundation. You cannot move tonight by the grace of God. Our children are being destroyed because we've removed the foundations. I've got to hurry. I've got to hurry here. Amen. And, 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 and amen. And, Finally, through a period of time, two conversations with the devil. Let me tell you, don't have no conversation with the devil. Just tell him the Lord rebuketh you and march on. You need to get up in the morning and say, devil, not today. We'll talk tomorrow, but not today. Then you get up in the morning and you say, not today, devil, it's today. Can I still get a witness in the house tonight? And the, amen. And finally, Delilah said, oh, this, 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 this is where it gets touchy. I like that little, little, uh, I don't know, a little old movie some, sometime. I watched it, and, and uh, the guy was describing the young man and woman that fell in love, and, and they were going to get married, and they were mushy, you know, kissy-kissy and all this. And he said, oh, He's about 13 years old, 12 or 13. He said, ooh, that's horrible. Ain't there a vaccination for that? <laughs> you ain't talking, I can see that. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. Did some of y'all even get that? Thank you. Thank you. When you get the vaccine next week, you'll think about that. She said, Samson, you don't love me. Samson, what people are going to think about you? They're going to talk about me, Samson. Samson, you've mocked me. 
Samson, people will, will, will snigger and laugh at me. And Samson, you got to tell me where your strength lies. And she kept working on him until he said she broke him down. She broke through to him. That's how the devil works in your lives. It may, it maybe it says it like this, one time won't hurt. One time can kill you. It might not, but it can. And finally, he says this with all of his heart. I've been a Nazarite from my mother's womb. Never a razor has come upon my head. It's my covenant with God. It's my commitment with God. It's what me and God have in relation with each other. Jesus was a Nazarite too, you know that? Just like Samson was. And there's never been a razor come up on my head. The locks of my hair have never been polled or trimmed. And if they be cut off, y'all know that story. Well, kindergartners know it. But if they cut the poles of my hair off, here's what he says that, that disturbs me. He said, I'll become an unusual man or like another man, just temporary, no strength. And here was the sad part again. She looked at him and knew that he had told her with all of his heart, his secret. Now I'm going to tell you, grass does look green on the other side sometime, ever what it may be. Walking away from God for a job. Moving somewhere and, and saying, I don't have to worry about a church. Amen. Church is not that important to me right now. So many things. You, 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 you know. And he told her with all of his heart. Can I get you, Matt? Austin? And he said, never a razor come up on my head. Can I just preach to you a few moments? And she caused him to go to sleep. Anytime you start compromising, you go to sleep. You lose your spiritual perception. You lose your guidance. And it's hard to tell what's right from what's wrong because of the shininess of the devil. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And all he could see was Delilah's heart. Let me tell you, if you break this world's heart, ha, ha, ha. You ain't got nothing in this world. You don't belong to this world. Amen. Sister Minnie and I are getting ready to have a duet. Amen. We're going to sing, this world ain't my home. Somebody shout hallelujah. Playing church is lying in Delilah's lap. And she lullabied him. And she cuddled him. And she massaged him. Oh. And he got into a sleep so deep that men came in there called barbers. And they cut his hair off. And all of a sudden... Delilah sort of stood up and hollered, Samson, the Philistines be upon you. And every time before that had happened, there had never been a Philistine to lay hands on Samson to hold him. And now for the first time, Philistines, men, got a hold of Samson, and he couldn't shake them. Let me tell you something. There's things that get hold of your life you can't shake off. Right. It's going to take the power. Tell me a loser. Yes, sir. <laughs> Beat him to death. Somebody shout hallelujah. Son, I don't know if you've got an insurance policy, but you come close to using it. Somebody shout hallelujah. Don't you let the devil get a hold of you. 
Don't you let the devil get a hold of you. But when you're compromising, you ain't got no strength to get loose. Can I get a witness? And then they took Samson. They took that dagger, that sword, ever what it was, and they gouged his eyeballs out till the water ran out of his eyeballs. And he could not see. The warrior, the man that God had born for the purpose of delivering Israel. Can I get a sh shout of amen in here? The church ought to be a place of deliverance. The drug addict ought to still walk in and say, I'm shaking. I, 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 I'm in trouble. I, and I need deliverance. And there ought to be enough Holy Ghost feel. Powered people. Amen. Of the unction of the Holy Ghost. To lay hands on them. And break that powers. And deliver them. By the anointing of God. The lost ought to come in. And feel the power of God. That they say, I got to have what you got. Thank you. Give God a shout of praise in here. I don't believe in a powerless church. I don't believe in a church that don't have any power. Somebody ought to pray enough that they can shake the devil's foundation. I think I told you all that story. Yesterday, my, my brother-in-law, and today is Jeannie and Daniel's anniversary, 23 years. God bless you, baby. Happy anniversary. I'll get y'all in a few minutes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But listen to me. Yesterday was my brother-in-law and, and my sister-in-law, Jean's sister, was their anniversary yesterday, the 21st or the 20th of September. They've been married 50 years, Bob and Steve, Barbara and Steve. But my brother-in-law, before he became my brother-in-law, we were best friends, and we stayed together and all this kind of stuff. And he had an old 61 or 2 Chevrolet, six-cylinder. Good old car, but you couldn't push it. Every time you get on it, he'd go, pop, pop, back through the carburetor. And a few times, you know, if somebody got after us, we had to get But you better make sure you wasn't in that car. You talk about some good boys when we was in that car. <laughs> Cause you can, and you can hold it wide open. He just he run about 60 mile an hour, 65. Pop, pop, pop. Just back to. I don't know what I was wrong with that thing. I, don't, I ain't sure. Ever, amen. But I'm going to tell you one thing. You won't go out and leave nobody in that car. Can I get a witness? Some old man could get out running a little faster and he'd probably pass us. <laughs> But God's good. How many of those God's good? I got to have more than just a pop, pop. I need the fire of God. The devil's out a target on your back. There's a bull eye on your back. And friend, if he can hit you, he's going to do it. Can I get a witness? Amen. But I want you to know one thing. Amen. God's still God. They cut his hair off. Amen. They put him in a prison. He grind the corn as an animal would for the enemy. But one day down there, I don't know what happened. His eyes didn't come back. But he felt that covenant. He felt God again. I wonder tonight, how many of y'all need to feel the power of the Holy Ghost again? How many needs to feel the anointing of God begin to come alive in you again? We need some Christians to know how to fight. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You need to know how to stand up. Yes. Rebuke that devil. Yes. My God. Shamson down there. They call later time. Him come for sport, make sport of him. And most time after they would do that to him, they would kill him. Samson was going to die. They were going to kill him. He wasn't going to live. They brought him out to the lad. But somehow, somebody didn't notice that the locks of his hair had begun to touch his shoulders again. God, I'd like to see a Holy Ghost service like that again. Let the power of God touch every one of us that we know we've been renewed in the power of God. Renewed in the things of God. That we got a fire in our souls. When we see somebody on the altar, we had run, amen, to pray with them. We'd see a service that's been trying to be hindered. We'd rise up and begin to stand up and say, devil, amen, hallelujah, we're going to win this battle. Amen, there's too much at stake right now. There's too much at stake not to stand up and to fight. Uh, there's too much uh, my God uh, I said there's too much tonight 
I got a grandson back there, but I got great grandkids right sitting back there. Huh? I got great grandsons in Isaac. I like to be right here when they have grandkids. Somebody shout amen. amen. Let them know the goodness of God. Amen. That heap like Jabez Gilead, I've got to keep her going. That stones like Jabez Gilead was a testimony of what God had done. And those that we are testimony of what God has done. Amen. And we are testimony of what God has done for us. He saved us. He kept us. He spared us. He gave us his love, his mercy. Amen. He showed us his favor. We are testimony to the world out there. As you testify that, amen, there was a change in you. You didn't cuss no more. You didn't act like you used to act. You wasn't what you used to be. And people noticed that. They still should notice us. Told y'all that story about that man down here at Minute Mark, which is called Casey's now. I don't know who that man was, but he was he was demonic. He was cursing God. I mean, it was blank, 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 every breath. It was blank, 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 blank. God, God, God. I walked in there. He kept on doing that. He's a big old guy. He's bigger than you. He just kept on. I made my mind up. One more word, boy, and I'm going to tap you on the shoulder. Stand up, sir. He turned around. I, I, he was, he had, I was going to tap him on the shoulder. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. Here's what I was going to tell you. To me? Yes, sir. My name is Wayne. You curse me all you want to, but leave my God out of it. Now, that's what I was going to say. And you know what? That old boy, he piped it down. Thank God he did. But I was getting ready. I'd rather swallow some teeth and stand up for my God Amen. than to keep my teeth and not swallow and not stand up for God. Amen. Any of y'all like that? Yes, sir. <laughs> I can get up. If you knock me down, I can get up. Yes, sir. That's true. I've been down before, but I got up. Right. Come on, somebody. Amen. We ain't a bunch of wimps. No, sir. God Samson said, Remember me. Remember my eyes. But this time, God's mercy on the people of Jabesh Gilead. Spirit of God came on Saul like it did Samson. And Samson or Saul said this. Tell them people by this time tomorrow when the sun is hot, you'll have help. Come here, sir. See, you've been battling. Man, you've been battling. You've been battling things that... You've been battling, battling, battling things that things are battling, battling things, things are battling, battling, battling. <laughs> you ever get there? Yeah. Nobody can't say nothing to you? Mm -hmm. been there. Copperhead. Been there. Yeah. Reason I say he's preaching to you, not me. <laughs> and you had all kinds of troubles. But I got some news for you tonight, son. Things gonna turn around. Amen. But this time tomorrow, Amen. don't give your eye up. You're gonna need that. Amen. You gotta guide your family. Right. You gotta touch some hearts and lives. Amen. You still gotta shout in you. You still gotta praise in you. Don't let the devil tell you. Don't let him blind that eye. Don't let him blind that eye. You can't see. Oh uh, God, somebody ought to shout yes in here. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm gonna keep mine by the grace of God. I'm gonna keep my revelation. I'm gonna keep my projection. I know where I'm going uh, by the grace of God. Somebody ought to give God another shout of praise in here. So I get ready to close here just in a moment. I want you to understand something. Satan wants your vision that you don't know how to fight. You don't know how to stand no more. But tonight there's the power of God in this building. How many believe there's the power of God in this building right now? And Samson said, God, remember my eyes. He shook him. God. Whew. And he felt that covenant with God again. He, let me tell you something. Samson, of all his sinning, 
That's the first time he repented. Folks, don't let the devil have your eye. That's, I'm preaching symbolically now. See, they would put that shield up. And they'd look around that shield with their right eye to make sure that, who they were fighting. Now, if you get that eye put out, you'll fight your brother and not know it. You'll cause problems that you wouldn't have known they caused. But somebody shout, there's help tonight. Somebody raise your hand and say, there's help tonight. Say it again, there's help. I want to see the man. I want to see the boy. I want to see the girl. I want to see the young people. God, I want to see people shaking on the power of God again. Anybody ever seen somebody shake on the power of God? Huh? Oh, I know that's strange today. I know people make fun of it. Let them make fun of it all they want. But as long as i got victory and peace of mind, and I don't have to worry about going to a psych ward because I'm about to lose my mind, I'm not knocking anybody that's been or somebody's got to go. I'm just telling you, God, I've got a victory in my life tonight, and the devil don't like it, and he wants it somehow. But i got news. My eye ain't going nowhere. I'm going to stand. Hallelujah. I know that there's victory. I know my heat by the sun. Amen. By the time it's hot, Somebody, somebody shout, I'm getting my victory. I'm getting my anointing. I'm being stirred in the power of God. I told you when I got to preaching, I told a man, I told several people this. I told a preacher this. He said, how's your church doing? I said, pretty good. He says, your crowd holding pretty good? I said, yeah. Yeah. I said, we, he said, how many people you have coming now? And I said, probably 175, 80 on Sunday morning, 85. Sunday night's 150, 60. I think it's about 160 since the more people come in. Wednesday night's 125. So I'm not bragging with it because, my God, I could change in a moment with people. But commitment don't. And he said, that's unheard of. But we've got sold out tickets for every kind of an event. We wouldn't miss some kind of game or some kind of a sport. I'm not knocking any of that or an activity. We run ourselves to death. We work ourselves to death. We have breakdowns, amen, and we got to take vacation. But you know what? The only time we take that is most times we have to, give, we have to take it from God. I didn't get in my way, man, this morning. I didn't expect nothing tonight. I ain't brought vacation. I need a month. <laughs> if you put up with this, oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. Ronnie, Brother Ronnie Lloyd, like, throw me on the bus tonight. Didn't he, Sister Lisa? Tried to get me hung. I need a vacation. He said something about Sister Lisa. He said, does your wife cook? And you're standing right there. I wasn't going to say no in front of her, her, her hear me. I'd be eating crackers for a month. <laughs> well, glory. I don't say God's good. I said, Brother Ronnie, I thought we was like that. <laughs> but God knows that God's good tonight. Uh, God's good. Do you ever see a man that the devil got his eye? I have. I've almost lost mine before. Don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. See, he's been after every one of ours. But you know what? I got it. Because I rose up by the name of Jesus. I said, devil, you can't have it. There are some people here tonight, as I close, as I close, the devil's been after you to get your right eye. But tonight, there is no surrender. Raise your hand, shout, there is no surrender. I watched Leah come in tonight. I hope she don't care me telling this. I was, seeing Leah, I was watching the board, but I seen Leah come in and Randy and Leslie always sits over here. 
Leah come down, never looked. She walked around, walked over here. Didn't see no mom and daddy. And it stunned her for just a second. She turned around, and now was mom and daddy back there. Sometimes we get shook a little bit. How many believes that? We get shook. As I get ready to close tonight, listen to me. God, bring me my glasses, son. Don't say God is good. Write this down. Write this down if you. The Ammonites were a cruel people. They just didn't want a treaty. There was just one step in destroying Israel. The devil seeks to humiliate us. How many's ever stood up and testified and you go home, the devil humiliated you? How many ever said something? And the devil humiliated you over it. And you struggle with that and you you done everything. And he belittled you so bad that you thought, that ain't worth testifying about no more. But it is. Look what God's done for my life. Raise your hand and say, look what God's done for my life. There's them stones of testimonies right there. Look what God's done. Tell your neighbor the devil wants to humiliate you. And if he can humiliate you, then he, he begins to seek to cripple you. To make you unfit or less capable for the service of God. Can I get a witness in here? Satan's job is to put me in the harmless category as he did Samson. But somehow, Samson was harmless for a while. But one day, when Samson put them arms around those pillars of that temple, of that Dagon temple, of that heathenistic temple, and he said, God, avenge me or remember me from my eyes. And that day he pulled down the, stone, the, 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 the pillars of that temple. And he killed more Philistines in that day than he did in all of his lifetime. God tonight wants to restore us back. How many feel like that you've been pushed around too much? How many feel like that you've thought about maybe making a Agreement with the devil somehow. Just to slow up, back off, do something else, go a different direction. But God says tonight, stand your ground because you're going to have help when the sun is hot. Raise your hand and shout, I'm going to have help by the time the sun is hot. By the time that sun gets up and melts off the dew, somebody's going to be shouting, Hallelujah. Now, Amen. As they prepare to come to music, listen to me. Jabesh Gilead, Saul was not even king. But 40 years later down the road, Saul died in a Philistine battle. And they cut their heads off. Saul's, Jonathan's, they cut their heads off. And they hung them. And hung their, wall, their bodies on a wall in, Philist, in, in Philistia. But you know who the men was that came and rescued the bodies of Saul and Jonathan? Was the men of Jabesh Gilead. And their bodies were done decaying and they burnt their bodies and buried them under a tree in Jabesh Gilead. When you stand up for what's right, right will come back and fight your battle for you when you can't fight it. Always remember, right will always win. You may suppress it, but it will win in the end. 
How many believes that tonight? By the grace of God. I want you just to bow your heads just for a moment and say, God, I don't want to lose my sight. I don't want to lose my revelation because, God, there's victory. God, there's time. Oh, God. God, there's help. Somebody shout, there's help. God, there's help for me tonight. God, there's help for me tonight. In the name of Jesus, would you say it with me in your prayer? There's help with for me tonight. Amen. Before, amen, the morning when I would have to surrender and give my eye there's going to be help would you stand to your feet amen and raise your hands and shout it with me there's help for me tonight there's help somebody shout there's help there's deliverance by the power of the Holy Ghost how many can say God I believe you tonight that you're going to move on this situation God it's out of my hands but I'm standing on your word tonight Come here, Brother Seth. I feel this again. Man, I feel something around you. I feel something around you. <laughs> give, no, give me the oil. I feel something around you. Man, I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I feel like something. I hear the sound of it's falling off of you by the anointing of an almighty God. Hallelujah. By the anointing of God. Just raise your hands and say, God, I got help tonight. I've been humiliated. I've been the devil's done everything he can. But right now, in the name of Jesus, God, there's a new strength. I lay my hands, and by the power of God, there's a stirring in your life. There's a stirring by the anointing of God. He shunned the Yama. Somebody shout, there's help. There's help. By the anointing of God. Hallelujah. Look at me. Look at me. See you. Of God, something's loosening from you, something's falling away from you. Hallelujah! There's been an attack, amen. There's been a listen, I ain't talking about a battle, there's been a set attack, a purpose of attack, amen, to knock you out for your feet. But tonight, I see the strength of God standing up in you, and people may not even understand you, they, amen. You may not even understood yourself, you've been under attack. But tonight, by the power of the Holy Ghost, it's Amen. Done. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Somebody give God a shout of praise in him. Shake it off, son. Woo! 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 God, I feel that through the heavenlies tonight. Somebody raise your hand. You feel that too, don't you? Raise your hands and love him all of this building. I know it's foolish in the eyes of the world. Amen. But God takes the foolish things that can find the wise. Love him tonight. Love him right now. Love him right now. Love him. There are some folk in here. You have been pushed to your limit. See, I know what I'm preaching about. You've been pushed to your limit. But tonight, God's come by your way. God's come by your way tonight. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. By the anointing and the power of God. God's come by to change some things for you. Somebody's even said today, I just don't know how much more I can take. Amen. Tonight, God's come by your way. Raise your hands and love him, somebody. Come on, raise your hands and praise him. Come on, worship God. This ain't no ordinary worship. This ain't no ordinary praise. This is to a God that's bigger than everything. Amen. By the power of God. This ain't nothing ordinary. In the name of Jesus. Come on and raise your hands and love the Lord God tonight. Amen. Somebody else. Amen. If you'll feel like you've been pushed to your limit, would you come and let me pray for you right now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Anybody else need prayer right now? I'm going to tell you. Amen. Don't wait. Come over when the anointing's gone. It ain't going to do it. Amen. Right now, while the anointing of God is up here, hallelujah, just raise your hand, sis, by the anointing of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. Woo. 
Somebody else, quickly. This ain't no ordinary worship. This ain't no ordinary time. Come on and worship him. Come on and love him right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Somebody else. By the power of God. By the anointing of God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come here, I want to pray for you, honey. Hallelujah. For Sister Connie, Lord. In the name of Jesus. God, by the power of God. God has been stacked against her. But right now, by the anointing. This ain't no ordinary worship. This ain't no ordinary song. Call this headache, this pressure. The God of service Call it what this thing is. The ordinary. Come on, ask God. I'm going to give it all I have in this moment. Oh, yes, I will. This ain't no ordinary worship. The ordinary I'm gonna give it all I have in this moment Oh, let me tell you about a woman with an issue Oh, she had it 12 long years, didn't know what Touch to her do. in her spirit, in the name of Jesus, in her spirit she about a man hey. coming through <laughs> her tail And she fell on her knees and she crawled on the ground. Well, this is what she said. If I can only touch but the gem of his garment. Come on, I'm gonna crazy. give it all Anybody I have else? in this moment. Anybody else? Oh, yes, Hallelujah. I will. This ain't no ordinary worship. Come on, this ain't no ordinary service. This ain't no ordinary song. For the God of service greater than the ordinary. God, that freshness in the Holy I'm Ghost. I'm give it all I Come have in this moment. Oh, yes, I will. This ain't no ordinary worship. This ain't no ordinary song. For the God of service greater than the ordinary. Call that in the I'm gonna give it all I have in this moment. I feel the Holy Ghost going to do I feel the power of God coming all over your body. I'm not anointed right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Twelve long years. Didn't know Whoa. what to do. She heard about a man coming through her chest. There's something God's calling out of the deep in you. And she fell on her knees and she crawled on the grave. Right now. Come on, oh, this is what she said. If I can only touch but the gem of his garland, I'm gonna give it all my heart in this moment. Come on, praise him, church. Oh, yes, I Come will. On, praise him. This ain't no ordinary worship. This ain't no ordinary song. Oh, for the God I serve is greater than. The ordinary. I'm gonna give it all I have in this moment. Oh yes, I will. This ain't no ordinary worship. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. This ain't no ordinary song. Oh, for the God of service greater than the ordinary. Moment. Oh, let me tell you about a woman with an issue. Oh, she had it 12 long years, didn't know what to do. But she heard about a man coming through her town. Raise your hands and love him, church. She fell on her knees and she called on the ground. Oh, but she said, Listen. Listen, we can't give the devil no opportunities. 
How many hears while I'm preaching to you tonight? Man, the devil's trying to talk me and quit, quit preaching like this. I got news for the devil. He's barking up the wrong tree. By the grace of God. We're in serious times. Yes, we are. I don't fear. Don't have to, but we're in serious times. The Lord's getting ready to come. People ain't ready. Church is asleep. We're doing our own things. But God said, I'm going to come for you. You're going to have some help before the sun gets hot. Ain't that good news? Before the sun gets hot, God's going to come meet your need. Son, God wants to meet your need. I ain't talking about just getting warmed by the fire. I'm talking about a fire in you. I'm talking about a fire that you don't control, but it controls you. That's the kind of fire. I love you, son. I think of you as my son. Hallelujah. If he wasn't that big, I'd take you on my lap. Somebody shout hallelujah. But God loves you tonight. The mercies of God, you're standing right there tonight. All the mercies of God. So many times you've come that close of leaving this world lost. And I'd have had to preach your funeral. And I'd probably have to say, he's in the hands of a just God. But God's good to you. Would you like to have that fire in you tonight that's so great that it just burns in you and your hunger saying, God, I gotta, I can't live that ordinary life tonight. I gotta live for you. Would you raise your hands? Walk closer to me. Father, raise your hands. Raise them, would you? Raise both of them. Raise both of them. Father, in the name of Jesus, real softly. Reach your hands this way, saints of God. To this young man, the struggles that are so strong, but God give him something inside of him that's greater than the strongest struggle. God, I lay my hands. you look at me had an old man of God to lay hands on me one time I was a little strong willed but that man of God laid hands on me he said God don't let him go to hell and every now and then I think of that and I do the same thing to you tonight that that man of God did to me and somewhere down the road my heart began to break I had nothing left. There was nothing there. It was me and emptiness. But I called out to a God. I ain't talking about just turning on a new leaf and trying to get better. I'm talking about getting born again, changed life. That you're a new creature, that old things are passed away and you've got a life inside you that's more real than the life that you live on the outside. Raise your hands and love him, saints. I love you, man. I wouldn't embarrass you at all. I'm not embarrassing you. I'm just telling you. I lay my hands and I believe God tonight. Because this ain't no ordinary service. Would you raise your hands on this building and say, God, stir my heart, God, that I'll fight against this spirit that wants to take my right eye. The power of God in the name of Jesus. This ain't no ordinary song. For the God is service greater than the ordinary. I'm gonna give it all I have in this moment. Oh, this ain't no ordinary worship. 
lot of funerals in the natural but I preached a whole lot more in the spiritual that people died hardest thing in the world is to to bury the spiritual that's died raise your hands and love him on this building don't let the devil get you eye tonight don't give the devil no grounds Raise your hands and love him. Raise your hands and love him. Listen, I don't want an ordinary church. I want a church where the power of God's alive in it. If people don't want it, I can't help that, but I want God in it. Everything that you he needs to do, God, by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, God's touching you, son. In the name of Jesus, raise your hands and love him. I'm gonna give it all I have in this moment. Can somebody give him right now? Somebody praise him. Somebody love him. Somebody. Shut up. 
Three hours, 12 hours, 12 hours, and shouted. Two hours, can't remember the time, but shouted for two hours of a dead, dumb idol of a God that could do not one thing for him. I serve a living God tonight. He ain't no ordinary God. He ain't one of the gods. He is the living God tonight. We go to a ball game, we can't keep our mouth shut. I don't understand that. That's us all. I ain't throwing it to one or two people. If I go to a ball game, they're going to know I've been there. I go to church, you're going to know I've been there. Tell your neighbor, this ain't been no ordinary service. Right now, would you raise your hands one more time? Father, I leave a blessing. God, the people that's been pushed and struggling. And God, I know the battles that I have. I know the battles that I fight. God, when people get touched and they're being stirred and they're being inspired. But tonight, Lord, let them to know that you're their help and you're a present help. And God, they don't have to compromise, agree. They don't have to give in to the enemy because you're an on-time God. In time and on time, every time. In the name of the Lord. How many knows that God's never failed you? Let's give God a shout. Knows he's a mighty good God tonight. Raise your hand and say, This ain't no ordinary worship. You need prayer. You need prayer. Oh, okay, I thought you need prayer. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. You can be seated just for a second. We're going to be dismissed just in a moment. Have we been blessed to be in the house of the Lord tonight? 